Hey guys, uh, this is Nathaniel. Uh, let's get started. So remember, I already activated my um, my condo environment. I, I sort of started up a Jupyter notebook. Already got in here. Uh, what I'm doing right now is displot. You can notice that it's running. Uh, simply, you start up the condo notebook. You click on displot or whatever you want. We'll start running. Okay. What do we have? Uh, so, so we're doing Seaborn. The first thing that we're going to do in Seaborn is uh, talking about univariate distributions. Now, what is a univariate distribution? This means you have one variable. Uh, so it might be the number of people that you have or the amount of Republicans that you might have. Um, just a single variable and trying to uh, figure out how it's distributed. So what the, what, the, what the age of these Republicans might be, what the age of, of uh, U.S. naval officers might be. Um, we'll, we'll start off by just running some imports. Uh, the first line here, this is the matplotlib inline magic import. So this is going to mean every time that you plot something uh, in your journal, this is basically going to show up inline. Uh, if you didn't do that, then what would happen is that either it wouldn't show up at all, or you'd have to use show in order to make it pop out and sort of like a little uh, little widget. Uh, we've got all these sort of auxiliary stuff. I, I'm not going to be going over these. These are massive uh, things, numpy, pandas, matplotlib. There may be a point in time when I will go over them. Uh, certainly at one point in time I'm going to be going over stats models since there's a little bit of weird stuff in the stats models. Um, now we're focusing on Seaborn. So we go ahead and we import Seaborn. Um, the data set that we're going to be using this Seaborn is the data set called tips. Okay, So this is, uh, this is not like advice. In this case this is actually money. Uh, in order to load this data set we just use sns.loaddataset. We're going to be loading this data set a lot. Now let's explore. Um, the first thing that we're going to be doing is just calling our displot uh, normally. This will take in a series or an array of data. Um, so it's not going to take in a two-dimensional or just an entire data frame. And you'll sort of see what it natively does. Um, so two things. It shows a histogram here as well as a, a KDE kernel density estimation for this. And we'll talk a little bit more about KDE in the future. Um, notice the histogram is normed. Uh, so this means it's all between 0 and 1. In fact, if you sum the entire thing, it's going to sum up all the way to 1, which is cool. Um, the KDE is also normed. Uh, the area underneath of this KDE is going to equal 1. Okay, but there's a couple more settings that we're going to explore, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the KDE and how it's generated. Um, the first setting that we're going to explore is this rug equals true. So no notice uh, you can set the histogram equals to true. You can set the KDE equals to true. You can also set this third setting that's called rug equals to true. If you set rug equals to true, what it's going to do is it's going to draw a small line underneath our data set for each point that's in our data set. This is somewhat useful. Um, for very large data sets, you never want to do this. This is, this is going to be massive. Uh, for large data sets, a histogram would be fine. KDE is going to be a little bit costly, a little bit expensive, and we'll talk about why in one second. But rug is going to be extremely costly. And you're also going to notice that this bottom here is going to be completely filled. Okay, so we're getting a good sense of what our tips look like. So in this distribution, we're we're looking at the total bill that's paid at this particular restaurant. We notice that the total bill looks like it has a long right tail, so it's got a, a little bit of skew to it. Um, uh, it. It probably has a little bit of kurtosis as well, just because it is uh, fat tailed. Okay, so this is somewhat interesting. Uh, what we can also do is we can uh, not norm the histogram. Okay, so I set the KDE equals to false. I keep the rug on. I don't norm the histogram. So what is this? This is literally the count. So the total bill being at the bottom is how much people paid, and this is the count. So you can look at actually what the uh, the data set sort of looks like. I, I almost like uh, not norming the histogram. Uh, generally speaking, it gives you a better sense of what this data looks like. You you still get the relative proportions in there. You might not be able to verbalize them as appropriately, but this tells you how many points are in your data set fairly well. So I like this. I like setting norm hist equal to false. Um, the next thing that we'll go ahead and do is we'll go ahead and show that we can fit any type of distribution on top of this that has a fit. Um, so uh, you, you're going to go ahead and you're going to specify this parameter fit right here, and you're going to specify stats.gamma. Okay, so what does this mean? So we import it scipy. So the scipy stats model has a ton of distributions. Um, so one of one of them happens to be gamma, but uh, well, let's let's sort of run this first just so you can see what it looks like. So in this case, we fit a gamma distribution. This this is a gamma distribution. I thought it looked kind of gamma distributed. Uh, again, uh, 
uh, you've got a, a fat tail to the right or, or just sort of a skewed uh, distribution. Um, you notice this is different than the KDE. The KDE had this little bump here, which you can sort of visibly tell is slightly different. It tries to um, make a new distribution. Uh, we don't really have a name for this distribution. It's, it's sort of like the average of normal distributions or something like that. Um, so, so somewhat of a Gaussian mixture. Um, down here, we're actually fitting a distribution. We say, hey, our data is very likely to take a specific distribution. It's very likely to take a gamma distribution. We're going to fit that distribution here. What distributions can you fit? You can fit lots of distributions. This has a ton of them. Uh, uniform and uh, normal. Um, uh, you know, a ton of these sorts of... The, maybe it has Dirchlet. Dirchlet. Uh, you wouldn't be able to fit a Dirchlet here, but uh, gamma is gamma's the one I'll pick. Um, so you're able to fit distributions. Um, <clears throat> so I guess the final thing that I wanted to do before we sort of go on here is just show you how KDE works. Um, and again, they, they do all this really nicely for you in the tutorials. Um, for those of you that like to read and like to experiment for yourself, I, I really recommend doing that. But for those of you that just kind of like to listen along and, and, and sort of see all the functionality, I'm going through everything. So, so every every single parameter, uh, I'm going to set it. I'm going to show it what it does. Uh, I'm going to tell you when you might want to use it. Likely. So, what what does KDE do? Um, so, for each point, what KDE is going to do is it's going to literally construct a normal distribution. Um, so, this is a kernel density estimation requires a kernel. Uh, you can specify whatever kernel you like, and and later on I'll show you in the, in the KDE plot. You can specify different types of kernels uh, in the um, KDE here, uh, for this, uh, you can only use normal kernels. So we're using a normal kernel. Uh, a kernel is something, at least uh, this type of kernel, there's a lot of kernels. There's a linear algebra kernel, and then there's a computer science kernel. The kernel here is something that integrates to one. Um, so uh, some distribution that's going to integrate to one. So in this case, we, we choose uh, a normal distribution. So we choose a normal distribution. We add a normal distribution to this plot uh, for every data point. Okay, and we've got a lot of overlapping normal distributions. Then what we can do is we can sum these normal distributions up. So we'll go ahead and we'll sum these normal distributions up. Uh, and we're using the, the, I think, integrating, we're using the, the trapezoidal rule. Um, and then after we sum these normal distributions up, we can go ahead and we can normalize. So we, we, can, we can divide this to make this entire thing uh, equal to 1. So... Um, so that's, that's how it works. That's how KDE works, um, if you were curious. So sort of the, the rug plot. Um, so, so that's it. That's, that's sort of the entire idea here. Um, this is all the functionality that you can use for it. Uh, you've got rug equal true, uh, hist true false, KDE true false, norm hist true false. Um, these are kind of the big things. Uh, if you are going to go ahead and do a fit, you cannot use uh, the KDE. Um, so at least not in the, in the version I'm using. This is always going to take a single distribution, so a single series, a single array. Okay, uh, when do you use this? You use this if you're particularly interested. Um, anytime you're trying to model your output variable, or anytime you have an output variable, you should probably use this type of plot. Um, this is not going to be comparing it to anything else, but you should understand what your output variable looks like, especially if you're doing something as Bayesian, or, or something that uses a probabilistic model. So you in, in Bayesian, you would like your posterior to look very similar to this. Um, anytime you're super interested in the distribution of a single thing, uh, super interested in it, so perhaps you are just going to be, um, you, you're just interested in estimating a statistic on something. Perhaps the payments of users. Are there, are there, are there whales that, that, that pay you a lot? Um, uh, this, this is when this would be useful. This is not so useful when you're trying to do uh, regression or, or, or machine learning on something where you might have interactions between a couple of types of charts. Uh, we'll see what's going to be useful for that next time. Um, so this has been uh, the first part of, of Seaborn, understanding the weird parts. There's not too many weird parts here. You'll be getting to a few uh, later on. Thanks, guys.